para dónde vamos bajando? Por acá. Ahorita están acarreando de allá para colocarlas acá y aquí lo se traslada con vehículo. ¿Cómo cuánta sí. gente son? Son 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, como 13. 12. Podemos bajar, pero con mucho cuidado. I'm on an agave farm in the Sierra Madre Mountains in Oaxaca, Mexico. It's the start of a long harvest day. The goal? To chop and pile up nine tons of these agave plants in the next five hours. Years ago, this kind of manpower might have been deployed to make tequila, the drink the agave plant is most famous for. But these men are here to make tequila's stronger, smokier relative, a drink that is taking the world by storm. It's called mezcal. Antes, el mezcal no se vendía, no? El mezcal solamente era para medicina, para celebraciones y para consumo personal, no? Now it feels like it's appearing in every bar and restaurant. Celebrities want in, and even California is making its own version. But Mezcal's rise is both a victory for those who love it and a cause for concern. Es tan grande el boom que llegan gentes de cualquier parte del mundo, cualquier parte de México, llegan, patentan su marca, eh, buscan sus mezcaleros, financian, reciben el, el mezcal, y nadie sabe qué proceso tiene. Mezcal makers say they are getting robbed in the dead of night waking up to empty fields where the succulents are ripped out of the ground. Sí. ¿Y cuánto dinero perdido en total, más o menos? Unos 20, 25 a 30 mil pesos. And some even say cartels are shaking them down. ¿Y lo han extorsionado? Sí, ya, ya sufrido. Of course, it was only a matter of time before the potential of mezcal was recognized. But what is the cost of this traditional and ancestral drink's explosion in popularity? And is there a way to slow down the chaos that's being created? I moved to the U.S. when I was 17 years old. I have a dream of building our own mezcal brand, but I just didn't know how to do it. That's when I started evolving a little by a little and learning about how we can register a company and also at the same time how we can launch a brand uh, of mezcal in the U.S. But this is in Oaxaca, in Mexico. Mexico? Okay. Yeah, in Oaxaca, yeah. Uh, this is Daniela Arellano Martinez, the owner of San Bartolo Mezcal Artesanal. He's a Mexican owner competing in a sea of giants, mostly foreigners to Mexico, that now own mezcal brands. San Bartolo Mezcal is about three years old. Launching the brand has been a monumental task for Daniel. His first shipment of mezcal arrived from Mexico at the start of the pandemic, a couple weeks after he lost his bartending job. So he started selling his mezcal first by word of mouth and personally delivering each bottle he sold on his bike. While big brands have the budget to hire ambassadors to represent their labels, Daniel has to do it all. From designing the label and managing imports to building his own personal relationships with the restaurants and bars where his products are sold. Vamos a comenzar con San Bartolo. San Bartolo de Otepec está ubicado a cuatro horas y media de la ciudad de Oaxaca y está en la Sierra Madre Sur. Estilación en alambique de cobre. Nuestros agaves usualmente son de 6 a 8 años de maduración a 875 metros a nivel del mar. Y este, nuestras producciones son entre 600 a 800 litros top por cada producción. Y ahora vamos con Santa María Quebola. Si tienen alguna pregunta, siéntense libres. Preguntar, preguntas, dudas. What you are seeing is the birth of a new favorite liquor in the U.S. In 2022, Americans spent more money on agave spirits than on domestic whiskeys. Agave spirits include tequila, mezcal, and anything else made with agave. While Americans still drink far more tequila than mezcal, the new spirit on the block is soaring in popularity with mezcal consumption jumping up almost 50% in the last year. 
Tequila is still the most popular, but it can only be made in the state of Jalisco and is made from a single variety, the blue agave, using a largely industrialized process. Mezcal, however, can be made from about 40 varieties of agave in 10 states in Mexico. And unlike tequila, it is typically produced by farmers using a laborious method that sometimes involves mules. But what does any of this actually look like in person? I headed to Oaxaca, the state in Mexico that produces 80% of the world's mezcal. And it wasn't long after I arrived that I had my taste of it. Eventually though, I had to get to the other thing I came for. We're about to see a harvest of a bunch of agave plants. We are following Juan, who is a maestro mezcalero, and he is producing mezcal for San Bartolo, which is Daniel's brand. ¿Y como por cuántas horas hacen esto? Como son 13, como de aquí a las 3 de la tarde, como 5 horas. Ok. Sí. ¿Y cómo, es la, cómo decide dónde sembrar el maguey? Pues realmente no decidimos, es donde se tenga terreno. O sea, no, no hay opción de de escoger prácticamente, ¿no? Sino donde hay donde hay hay chance y un familiar haya cultivado anteriormente. Some agaves can take up to 30 years to mature. The men here are harvesting espadín. Espadín is one of the easiest agaves to grow. It takes up to a decade to mature, but it can peak in as little as 6 years. Y una piña, ¿cuánto cuántas botellas? Una piña Depende mucho el tamaño. En promedio aquí las piñas pesan como unos 80 a 100 kilos. Entonces podemos hablar de unas 12 botellas, 12 a 15 botellas. Una piña. Una piña. Y con esto podemos checar el azúcar, la concentración de azúcar de los magueyes. Ah, bien. Y con eso checar más o menos su rendimiento. Vamos a ver. Por ejemplo, si lo hacemos así. ¿Qué sería lo mejor? Lo mejor sería... 35 a 40, pero después de 30 ya está bien. Ya está bastante bien. The high sugar content in espadín also helps it yield larger volumes of mezcal in comparison with other agave varieties that can require triple the amount of plants. At the Palenque, the heart of the agave plants, called piñas, are chopped and stacked around an oven pit in the ground that's lined with hot rocks and heated by firewood. The pit is covered and the agaves are cooked for up to five days. Then it's crushed by a mule or a horse to make a pulp. Sí, la, de la molienda se traslada aquí a las tinas de fermentación. Y aquí depende mucho el clima, si es cálido, es templado. Si, entre más frío haga, tarda más la fermentación. Entre más cálido sea, es mejor. When the fermentation is complete, the mixture is transferred to copper stills. This is where the distilling happens. The liquor yielded is rated between 50 and 90% alcohol. Hay que tomar poquito porque está alto. Ok. Por ejemplo, bueno, esta ya es la segunda destilación. Entonces debe tener entre 60 grados en promedio. 50, 60 grados de alcohol. Bueno, sale. 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 Está bastante alto, ¿eh? eh pero está, pero todavía sigue, es, sí. es suavecito y un, un, y un poco dulce. No quema. No quema, sí. No, pero está muy rico. 
After meeting the people who make mezcal and experiencing not only the culture, but seeing the rigorous process that it takes to make this drink, I wondered if everyone who drinks it ever thinks about where their mezcal comes from. Una, dos, tres. In Santiago Matatlan, one of the most visited places by tourists, you see one brand after another. While mezcal has given many jobs and has slowed migration from Mexico, the sudden demand for the liquor is starting to show its dark side. One of the reasons it's hard to scale up the production of mezcal is that it takes a long time for agave to mature, at least six years. Which is why, with the surge in demand for mezcal, agave theft is on the rise. Sergio Juárez Patricio from San Agustín Amatengo was one of the victims. Entonces, mire, acá estaba la, aquí estaba la línea que me robaron. Estaba por, acá, estaba acá la línea que me robaron. Ahorita ya no se ve porque ya le, sí observo estos magueyes que son recién plantados de este año aquí en lugar de esta que estaba acá la quité, barbechamos la tierra y replantamos esta más tierna. Pero de aquí para allá me robaron la más de una tonelada de, de agave. It's hard to imagine how this even happens. But Sergio told me people do it in the middle of the night. La gente viene y se lleva esto gran, grandísimo. Sí, es que con el machete eso es cuestión de, de este de unos minutos nada más este el que ya tiene práctica para cortarlo es, es bastante rápido es muy se despenca y se se accede a la piña qué le cuento en unos 10 minutos ya está despencada se lleva uno como se lleva uno la cabeza. Ustedes son expertos en cortar y con el machete filoso, rápido lo, lo corta uno, o sea, no se tarda uno mucho. Y luego vienen unos cuatro o cinco, se lo llevan muy rápido. Claro. Sí. ¿Y cuántos años tiene este? Este tiene ya seis años. Grandísimo, para sí, seis años. seis años tiene. Entonces ya prácticamente ya está bueno para, para llevárselo. Se me hace que unos, la próxima semana yo creo que me lo, me lo llevo por el temor de que no se lo vayan a robar también. As the demand for mezcal grows, it's not just customers who are taking note of the boom. This is Don Pablo Arellanos Ramirez. He's been making mezcal for 40 years. Recently, he got a call from a local gangster ordering him to pay 20,000 pesos, about $1,000. That's a lot of money in a country where minimum wage is about $11.50 a day. Pero sí lo han extorsionado. Sí. Sí, ya, ya sufrido. Pues ya se les hace muy fácil y eso no es aquí, es, puede ser en Oaxaca, en México, que se les haga fácil nomás que porque quieren la vida fácil, agarran su pistola, van, te amenazan y que dicen que son del cárter. Some communities are taking matters into their own hands to protect themselves. Before entering San Bartolo, where Daniel's grandfather lives, there is a chain and some guards. If they don't know you, you're unable to enter the community. Mezcal has inevitably also attracted the interest of global alcohol giants like Bernard Ricard and many others far from Mexico. Just like with tequila, where George Clooney owned one of the biggest brands, celebrities are making their mark with mezcal they're also making their mark on the land. Some producers from San Luis del Rio sell their liquor to Dos Hombres Mezcal, the brand owned by Breaking Bad actors Aaron Paul and Brian Cranston. The terrain here looks drastically different eight years ago. These satellite images show how much of the land has been cleared for agave farms. As if Mexican farmers weren't up against enough obstacles on the home front. With the boom, they're facing more international competition than ever before, some of which comes from right across the border. These agaves are not growing in Mexico. This is Craig Reynolds' farm in California's Yolo County. He started growing blue agaves, the same variety used to make tequila, first just as an experiment about 10 years ago. Originally, I got these from uh, seedlings from a grower down in Riverside, California. 
and he had gotten his plants from Mexico. So these are from Mexico to California, Southern California to Northern California. What made you get interested in agave? I was working in the legislature and involved in water issues and realized that agave might be a solution to California's water challenges and drought and started talking about it. What Craig is referring to is that agave plants don't need as much water as, say, almond trees or berries. Years after planting agave fields, his experiment worked. His agave plants have ended up in four different bottles of agave spirits that he says each have their own flavors, but taste a lot like mezcal. Cool, well, let's do a tasting. But to call something mezcal, it has to be made in Mexico. So he has to call it agave spirits, even though he cooks his agaves the same way they are cooked for mezcal. In 1974, tequila became the first product outside of Europe to be protected by a denomination of origin. Mezcal got that protection in 1994. As with champagne and bourbon, the designation means a liquor has to be produced in a certain region and meet quality standards. Limiting who can use the name Mezcal helps Mexican producers like Jessica Hernandez, who is also trying to get her brand sold in the U.S. with the help of Daniel. But she is still worried about what Americans making mezcal will mean for her business and the legacy of her ancestors who have grown agave for over a century. ¿Qué piensas de los americanos que están haciendo el destilado de agave? Más que nada, ¿por qué no lo hicieron desde antes? ¿Sí me explico? Este, porque ahora que está como en su boom, ahora sí le ven como el, eh, pues los beneficios. Yo creo que más que nada es la tradición. La cultura, el legado, todo lo que tiene que envolver el mezcal. Más que vender una botella, siento yo que también es como toda la historia y el trasfondo que lleva. Hey, how's it going? Wow, nice, very nice. Would you like to try some mezcal? I'd like to try some mezcal. Yeah, for sure. Pretty label, I don't label more. Oh, thank you so much. It's really nice. Yeah, it's inspired in the community of San Bartolo de Tepec in Oaxaca, mm -hmm. where we produce the mezcal. So we are part of the 1% of mezcals owned by Mexicans. Uh, we are a family operator. Uh, my grandpa is the one who produced the mezcal in Mexico. Delicious. Thank you. Um, uh, and we import and distribute around the country. Despite having figured out every last detail of how to get his grandfather's mezcal to the U.S., for Daniel, the hustle never ends. I'm really proud also to say, like, basically it's a brand that it was built, like, paycheck by paycheck. <laughs> and until we got it to the country, and it's been amazing. What has been the hardest part of this journey? Living with the, the um, fear, I will say, of thinking that if I do this, I could get the potter. I can say, like, there is a day that is, everything is working well, and there are days the everything is going bad. So even the, the dream, it became true. It's still like ups and downs. And, and I feel like that's part of being a family owned and a small brand and not having a multi-million dollar budget. The mezcal boom is causing some havoc. Not all of it is bad. For one family, Daniel's, it's an opportunity not only to make a living in America, but also a way for them to share a part of who they are with the world. No recuerdo cuántos años exactamente Daniel empezó con que quería exportar el mezcal porque mi papá lo fabricaba desde hace muchísimos años. Yo, yo no le creía porque no se, se me hacía un poco difícil, pero gracias a Dios ahí va. Este, escalando y, y, y le digo, bueno, mientras tú hagas las cosas correctas y tus negocios correctos, siempre te van a llegar cosas correctas. Y San Bartolo Mezcal remains small compared to other brands in the business, but Daniel has managed to gain a foothold in a market that is only getting more competitive. Me acuerdo que un par de días estaba buscando fotos uh, y pues vi la foto de la primera vez que importamos el mezcal, de cómo lo estaban botellando y, y pues fue parte del proceso, ¿no? De 
de saber que a pesar de que la gente no creía en mí, eh, fue el hecho de recordarme que en algún punto de mi vida tomé una decisión de hacerlo y me enfrenté ante todo y me atreví a hacerlo, ¿no? Era algo que sí me dolía. De los principios de cómo tuvimos acá. Fue muy fuerte, pero gracias a Dios pudimos superar, superar eso. Él pudo superar. Salir adelante de eso. Y, y no sabes, no se ha dado por vencido. No se ha dado por vencido. Y es algo que le tengo que agradecer mucho. Y como hijo, como gran persona, hijo. Te quiero demasiado. Estoy orgulloso de ti, mi Cuídate. Sí. Así. It's really inspirational to know that at this moment Mezcal is worldwide famous. I remember one day when I was a child, that my grandpa he said like, people will know about Mezcal. Like all over the world will know about Mezcal because it's so delicious, it's so good, and it's artisanal. I didn't really believe him in that time.